You're listening to Next on the Tee with Chris Mascaro, where PGA and LPGA legends, pros, and top instructors come to share their stories, insights, and tips. Now, back to you, Chris. All right, now back with me on the French Lick Resort guest line to help me celebrate our 200th episode tonight is 2013 Senior Open Champion, and now one of the top instructors in the game, and that's Mark Weeby. Let me remind you about Mark's background. He's from Seaside, Oregon, and grew up in Escondido, California. Played his college golf first at Palomar Junior College, and then transferred to San Jose State. While at Palomar, he was the individual medalist at the 1977 California Amateur, and he won the 1977 Idaho Amateur as well. He was named second-team All-American in 1979 at San Jose State. That season, he and Don Levin won the uh, Silverado Invitational in Napa, California. He turned pro in 1980 and started on the PGA Tour in 1983. His first career win came at the 1985 Anheuser-Busch Classic, and he beat John Mahaffey with a birdie on the first playoff hole. Won again in the following year, 1986, at the Hardy's Golf Classic by one shot over Kurt Byron, thanks to a, 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 a birdie on 17 during the final round. Mark matched Bobby Watkins' record for being the youngest winner on the Champions Tour at 50 years and 10 days old when he won the SAS Championship. 2013, he won the Senior Open Championship at Royal Birkdale, defeated Bernard Longer on the fifth playoff hole to capture that senior major after a final round 66. Later in 2013, he captured the Pacific Lynx Hawaii Championship again in a playoff over Corey Pavin. In all, he's won eight times as a professional, twice on the PGA Tour, five times on the Champions Tour, plus the 1986 Colorado Open, and he's now the Director of Instruction at San Jose Country Club in San Jose, California, and I'm thrilled he is back with me again tonight here on Next on the Tee. Hey, Mark, thanks for coming back on the show. Hey, Chris. Boy, thanks so much for those kind words. So, Mark, catch, catch us up. How are things been this summer out in San Jose? Well, it's been hot, I can tell you that. Um, <laughs> after being in Denver, you know, we had our hot times there for, lived there for 30 years and it got hot, but it, it eventually cooled off at night. It's been hot this summer, but, uh, you know, things, things are moving right along. Um, as far as golf goes, our, our oldest daughter, uh, had a baby three weeks ago. So. Wow. Congratulations. Maybe, yeah. So, uh, it's been pretty exciting, obviously, and uh, and not much sleep for my daughter and her husband, but um, they're both doctors, so they don't sleep that much anyway. They'll get over it. Wow. Uh, but, yeah, so, uh, and then the golf, then, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to see it go a little faster, but it's it's trending in the right direction. Um, being involved with uh, many more juniors uh, as time goes by and, Probably if, if I had to choose one of my favorite things to do it to help the kids and uh, not only with swing but just thoughts and you know the mental side of the game and uh, what to think when to think how to think type of stuff. So uh, as far as that goes, it's been a, a nice, busy, hot summer. And Mark, when you when you're working with the junior players, right? I mean, I, I gotta wonder, are they aware? Of your of your past and the things that you accomplished, particularly being a senior Open champion, do they realize who Mark Weeby is and who they get the opportunity to to you know get instruction from? Well, um, I think some of them do only because their parents are either watched me on TV um, way long ago because the the parents of these kids are way younger than I am. So, um, or there's the internet; people can look you up. Um, and see what uh, what you did on tour and stuff like that. But in most cases, um, I kid with some of my juniors because when they look at me sometimes and they're not sure if I know what I'm talking about, I have to remind them, hey, you know, I do know what I'm talking about, and I did have <laughs> success with this, and I know you don't know me, and I, I, I can't use my peers as examples ever in my teaching because they give me that same blank stare. When I say, you know, let's work on our tempos. Let's feel more like Ben Crenshaw. And they look at me like I, they have no idea who Ben Crenshaw is. So I, I have wow. to know. I have, but I have to, exactly. Wow is my first thought. And then, uh, then I have to, I have to use the nowadays guys. I, you know, Jordan Spieth, you know, Jordan Spieth's putting tempo is or, 
but it has to be current. So obviously now I have to watch more golf on TV to keep up on things. <laughs> Maybe you should bring yeah, the great. senior claret jug out there and put it on a, a, a chair or something and they look at you funny. You got to point to that, like, you know, yeah, that. That's why. Well, well, I, it is funny because believe me, I have showed a number of them pictures and I also have a couple of pictures some buddies took of all my trophies gathered up on a big table. And uh, I showed them that, too, because I'm trying to, as half-jokingly, but um, I'm trying to say, listen, I do know what I'm talking about. I know I'm a old, chubby, white-haired guy, but uh, <laughs> believe it or not, believe it or not, I was, I was good at one time. I was pretty good. <laughs> so we joke, we joke quite a bit uh, about all that stuff. Mark, switching gears a little bit, um, earlier this summer, we lost Bruce Litsky, a guy that you competed against for years, and I just kind of wanted to get some thoughts. What do you remember about uh, playing alongside Bruce? Oh, my gosh. Uh, a ton. Um, he was, I think, first and foremost, he was uh, idolized by the by the youngsters, I'm not that much younger than he is, I think six or seven years, but because not just from his golfing ability, it's because he didn't even have a hard time juggling family and and golf for a living. He seemed to master it. And for those of us who had kids and wanted to be, you know, more baseball games and uh, dance recitals and soccer games and all the stuff. Uh, Bruce was kind of our idol for that. He was a great leader, uh, you know. So we thought about him, I think, more in I, – I have anyway uh, in that regard. And, by the way, he was really a good golfer. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, the things I take away are – you know, he was a, as far as golf goes, I like the left to right shot. Uh, he was the king of the left to right shot. So I idolized him in our golfing abilities. And then, uh, like I said, the family, how he handled his family was a great role model. Mark, I want to get your memories as well from playing at Carnoustie. I know in the senior open championship back in 2010, you played, played there at that golf course. What, what are your memories of Carnoustie? Well, you know, they call it Carnoustie. And, you know, I, the first, my first round, uh, in the first major I played over there, I think I shot 59. I played early in the morning. I had a great tee time. There was no wind. And I really did think, well, God, you know, you can shoot low here. I, I was kind of bummed with, I think I shot 69 and I, I thought, wow, I really didn't score as well as I played. I played pretty good. I think I can shoot low. And then I remember the next day, I was the last group off the tee, the second round. Uh, so I went like at 2.30 or something like that. And the wind blew, not super hard, but it blew. And I shot 80, as quick as you could shoot an 80. Um, and had the biggest piece of humble pie I've ever had. I couldn't. All I remember was making bogey after bogey after bogey after bogey, and I thought, okay, now I get it. This is what they're saying when they call it Carnassi. Um, so I I think it's a golf course. Definitely the more you play it, the better chances you have having a nice score. Uh, for for some of these girls over there, I think they can whip into Carnassi and just go ahead and just dominate it. <laughs> You know, I, I don't, I, I guess you could, that could happen, but, uh, I just thought it was, a, it becomes intimidating with the element, um, to where you're not really sure. <laughs> you're just not really sure. You think you're hitting good shots, but the greens move and your ball misses them. And, you know, all of a sudden bunkers are in play that weren't in play on the prior day. And, uh, just like all those courses over there. <laughs> They're kind of all like that. All of a sudden, you go, "Oh, I didn't know that was in play." Um, till the till it's in play. And Mark, your your senior open championship victory was just five short years ago. They 
just had the, the the senior championship not that long ago. This year it was at St Andrews, and and I believe it was the first time they played the senior open there. But uh, curious to get, did you ever get an opportunity to play the old course? You know, I I never did, and I there's a thing about um, and that's changed now because I'm not playing professionally anymore. But there's a thing about going to a course when you know there's a chance to get in on that course during a tournament. Uh, I felt the same way about the Masters. You know, I never really wanted to play Augusta just to go play it. I wanted to play it in the Masters. So just in that same regard, I really wanted to play St. Andrews in, in a tournament, not just go over there and play sometimes just to, because it's there. I wanted it to be special. And uh, I would have it just broke my heart to not go this year. I just was, it was aching. I just wanted to be, you know, I just can't do it anymore so it, there's a part of me that no, understands the other part of me is like couldn't you just go over there a little bit you know because of <laughs> what it means and how what a spiritual golf course and golf spiritual place that whole place that area is uh, I, but I, I, I just think I never did I never did and I did it on purpose and then here it is on the schedule and then I can't play so it just wasn't meant to be, I guess. And Mark, when you when you go over to Ireland or Scotland and you're going to play a link style golf course and you're playing in the conditions over there, how how do you get prepared for that? Because I I have to imagine the strategy for how you're playing those courses is very different than when you're playing courses, you know, regularly over here. I know we have links courses, you know, here in the States as well, but for the most part, it's a, it's a different style of game. How do you practice and get prepped for that? Well, I think, you know, to tell you the truth, I think you, as a golfer, I think you practice and prep your whole life for stuff like that because there's, you like you said, it's a link style golf over there, uh, and unless you're playing on that, you're not going to be very versed at that. So, you know, I think you, you take all the times when you were a kid and you played in the rain and the wind and uh, junior golf and practice and all your experiences throughout your life of all the shots you hit because you're going to need every one of them when you go over there. Uh, I think it's more of a lifelong prep. Uh, for me, it was. I grew up on some uneven golf courses. They weren't linked, but a lot of uneven lies when I was a kid and you know, not all the golf courses over there are flat, and you know, believe it or not, you hit it on some mounds, even though you don't want to. Uh, and you're hitting a lot of different lies uh, out of whiskey grass and uh, with elements that, you know, unless you play in tournaments like with those elements, it's hard to really practice that. So, um, boy, you're really calling all your resources from your entire life. Uh, when you go over there. And by the way, you do kind of want to play it like you're a kid anyway, um, because you play your better, your best golf that way. So, uh, I think it's, I, you know, it's just, I, without a doubt, it's my favorite golf to play. That's kind of, to me, no knock on what we do over here, but that's real golf over there. And then we, we play a form of over here. Mark, I want to get uh, your thoughts on the mental side of the game. For for you personally and when you're talking to your junior golfers, when you're in the heat of the battle coming down the stretch and you have an opportunity to win, how do you stay in the moment and not let your mind wander, get ahead of yourself, you know, thinking about, hey, I could win this golf tournament or let the nerves sort of get into what you're doing and watching, you know, what's going on around you. How do you stay in the moment and how do you teach your your students to stay in that moment so you stay focused and you still have the opportunity to win and not get distracted. Yeah, um, you know, that's, that's hard to teach. Um, I think you, you develop a, your own way to deal with that by being in that position time after time after time uh, until you realize you don't have to jump through any hoops. There's no magic tricks. It's just golf. Uh, but we all think it, it all of a sudden becomes more important now because we have a chance to win. So now every, I better be serious and take this, you know, I better really think about what I'm doing. And you, uh, you have to 
trial and error a lot, and you, you know, and as much as those times hurt, uh, when you don't succeed, I think that's your, uh, that's your growth is in those times, um, of how to deal with things. And it, uh, you know, cause you, if, if you're a kid then has never been on that stage, uh, you don't really know, and, you know, nowadays there's a lot of kids that are almost programmed so much that they don't they don't even think about stuff like that but then that becomes you're, you're playing robot golf so you know i talk about this a lot and i tell the kids the same thing i said you know you got to be there and once you taste that you realize that tastes pretty good i want to go back again and then the more you go back and the more you feel it and the more you whether you succeed or or don't at that time you start building all of this experience as at a young age so the more you can be in that last group and feel those jitters and deal with the the little devil saying hey you know all you got to do is par in um you know you kind of you kind of learn how to uh how to talk to that voice i guess actually so um i don't think there's any secret to that i mean you can't just go out and not feel it because the coolest thing about being in a tournament and getting that where you are kind of scared, kind of nervous, but super excited, that's that feeling that I think, I mean, I always played for that. That's what drove me to want to succeed because I loved it. I loved having a shot at testing my skills and what I've prepared my life for. I love having a chance to measure that and see if, how good am I. You know, I've grinded my rear end off. Now we're going to see because the hard part's the prep. The easy part's the playing. Prepping yourself to get to that moment and then getting in that moment is so exciting. So I'm, I try to share all of that with my juniors, uh, for sure because they don't have much data going on in there. You know, they haven't played that long and they've, um, they're new or, you know, they're, they're, you know, right now they're, they're happy they're shooting a lot of 73s and 4s and they're trying to figure out how to shoot in the 60s and, um, that's all part of it is, you know, and Gary Player, uh, I've heard him on your show, you know, he mentioned some things that it's so right on. It's so right on. It's, you know, just being in the moment and, and looking someone in the eye if you don't win and, and realizing that it, although it hurts, you learn. You learn something, you know, and uh, putting that together as building blocks along the way, and then you, you try to build that big wall of success. Mark, before we let you go, remind our listeners again about what you're doing now and how they can uh, get in touch with you and follow you uh, either online or on social media. Well, that's great. Thank you. Uh, yep, I'm at uh, San Jose Country Club. I am the director of instruction, so I'm uh, I'm there a lot and teach a lot and try to get programs together and um and I don't do only juniors and I don't do only really great golfers. I I have a man one of my favorite lessons that I give weekly is to a man that had a stroke just under a year ago and uh his goal is to break a hundred. And we go out every Thursday in the morning and grind it out and he's getting better. So I I teach just about anybody that wants to learn. Um my website is markweebygolf.com, um, and on there will be my email, which is uh, mweebygolf at gmail.com, but that will be on my website. And uh, and if you feel like you're in the area and you'd like to book a lesson, you can also do that online through my website. You just hit the button, book, book now, and you can book your own lesson, just like going to the dentist, but hopefully not. <laughs> Um, and yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm just, you know, I like, I like sharing what I've learned and I've learned from the best. So kind of fun stuff. Well, Mark, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your night to come back and, and help me celebrate our 200th episode of the show. It's, uh, it's always getting, it's always great getting to spend some time with you. You're such, you're such a fun guy and I love your stories and I love your insights and, and now you're a fantastic teacher of the game as well. So thank you very much for, for being here. And like I say, taking time out of your night to come back on the show. Chris, you're great. Thank you very much. And happy 200th episode. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's very cool. I appreciate you. Thank you, Mark. Look forward to catching up with you hopefully again real soon in between now and then. Congratulations to your daughter and your son-in-law, and uh, and congratulations to you and your wife on your new grandchild. Hope everything uh, is is well with him, and uh, look forward to catching up with you soon. Awesome, Chris. Thanks so much. Take care, Mark. All right. That is the great Mark Wiebe. And uh, look forward to catching up with, again uh, with Mark really soon. And I tell you what, those kids that get to, you know, have him as their instructor. And, that, and that's what, you know, in talking to Mark, right, If, if l- looking at me funny, right? Like, you know, are you sure you know what you're talking about? I'd have that, that senior open claret jug sitting right there on a bench, on a stump, on a chair, whatever it was. And anytime someone sort of raised an eyebrow, I'd point right to that. Don't ask questions. I, I, I was pretty good. There's why. To think that Mark's name is etched on that claret jug with so many legends of the game is going to be there forever, right? And, you know, he mentioned Gary Player. Gary Player, good friend of ours, and his, his name's on there three times, and Mark's name's right there with him. So that's a huge honor, and those kids uh, are very honored to have Mark as their instructor. Look forward to catching up with, with him soon. 